The devastating regional war that began in 2055 decimated the world's two most powerful nations, entailed widespread use of inexpensive, widely available weapons of mass destruction, unleashed the biggest standoff ever seen, and created detrimental ripple effects across the world, causing global financial collapse, nuclear winter, and near instant drastic population decline, escalating GDP declines, as well as causing revolutions fueled by disinformation in several countries. Globalization as a system of trade also became defunct, and with that, other global institutions collapsed too. Power dynamics in the Pan-Asiatic region had gradually shifted over many decades in favor of China and India, aided by domestic innovation and access to Russian energy resources. As early as 2025, the U.S. permanently stationed warships in Taiwan Strait to counter what they see as a rising threat of a Chinese invasion of the island. By 2040, China's confidence and power surge was unquestionable. China now had its own side-tech prowess, manufacturing excellence that finally outmatched Taiwan's. China's powerful or strategically placed alliances with Hungary, Iran, North Korea, Russia, and Serbia, and a host of African nations, including Nigeria, had created the conditions ripe for a confrontation with the United States. Given the EU's economic decline, combined with U.S. decline, and in parallel, the impact of American homegrown totalitarian tendencies, China was only looking for the moment to strike on Taiwan. In an effort to survive and halt immigration, the EU now extended to Northern Africa and the Middle East in a drastic upgrading of the European neighborhood policy. But the expansion proved very costly. The invasion happened in 2055. The Chinese incursion on Taiwan, despite partial U.S. military support, was preceded by a crippling cyber attack, supported by massive drone swarms led by powerful AIs, mirrored the Allied assault on the beaches of Normandy in its scope and had a devastating human toll. The incursion lasted only for a year before full surrender of the Taiwanese forces. As a result, the global manufacturing industry particularly transportation and high-tech, came to a standstill, despite growing U.S. reshoring efforts. A few years after an attempted appeasement in Southeast Asia, China struck the U.S. mainland, first with a massive array of cyber weapons, crippling financial and military infrastructure. Then, with nuclear bombs from submarines, China physically took out key infrastructure in key cities, but using its vast naval fleet to occupy every island between Hawaii and the South China Sea, turning that region of the world into a Chinese protectorate. The U.S. struck back with nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles in major Chinese population centers. Repercussions included the U.N. labeling China and the U.S. as terrorist states. China's attack formally triggered NATO's Article 5, which says that an attack on one is an attack on all. But there was little time to implement coordinated assistance from the UK and France. NATO became marginalized. This left the world with very few global institutions to repair diplomatic ties. Globalization as a system of trade collapsed. World GDP shrunk by 80% by 2075, ushering in revolutions in many countries. The military complex naturally became the nexus of technological control which led all key emerging technologies into centralized patterns of evolution. That also slowed technological progress, and as a result, economic growth was stuck in a sluggish pattern, constantly being threatened by stagflation. Overall, the driving forces that caused the scenario World War III and the corresponding fall of globalization and Western-style welfare states as we know them was not the China-US rivalry itself, but their energy rivalry, the ripple effects of financial and destabilizing fervent and inspiration combined with a lack of enforcement mechanisms to stem the tide and the increasingly advanced technology-based tools of disinformation.